now from CBS 4 News. This is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Good morning. I'm Jim DeFeedy and welcome to Facing South Florida. Later in today's show, I speak with Art Acevedo, who has been hired to be Miami's next police chief. He's currently the Houston chief, but he has some very interesting ties to Miami. But first, I think we should discuss the shadowy efforts of a small group of wealthy men and powerful lawmakers to bring Las Vegas-style casinos to South Florida. As the Washington Post and the Miami Herald first exposed, there have been secret negotiations for months involving the top Republicans in Florida. One of the men trying desperately to pull this off is billionaire Jeffrey Sofer, who wants a casino license for the Fountain Blue Hotel he owns on Miami Beach. He has funneled hundreds of thousands of dollars into Republican coffers and lobbied legislators on board his mega yacht, even bringing in Tom Brady and his wife, Giselle Bündchen, to impress the lawmakers. Also in the mix, former President Donald Trump, who would like to turn the Doral Country Club into a casino. All of this is being done in secret. There is no bill in Tallahassee. Instead, what will likely happen is the casino language will magically appear in a bill without anyone having the time to understand what is happening. This week, I spoke to three men who have been fighting the casino gambling interest for years. Miami Beach Mayor Dan Gelber, developer Armando Cudina, and businessman Norman Brayman. In 2018, uh, voters by 71% voted for a measure statewide entitled voter control of gambling in Florida. And we are hearing right now that in back rooms, I think more so on yachts and in private planes than in back rooms, uh, some very uh, ambitious people are trying to subvert the will of the voters of Florida by essentially forcing into communities like mine, casino gambling over the will of the people without complying with the constitution and really with an intent to make a very few people incredibly wealthy at the expense of all the cannibalized uh, businesses and, uh, and suffering that's going to occur. So we expect any day, and we haven't seen it, a measure to come out of the legislature that will allow uh, permits like slots and things like that to go from where they are to anywhere, perhaps in my town, at the Fontainebleau perhaps, and included in the measure will be a requirement that local governments cannot even stop them from doing it even though our, all of our land ordinances do not even allow for casinos in our city. And, and you talk, mentioned the Fountain Blue. That's the one that's been most notable because the owner of the Fountain Blue has been actively courting the, uh, the legislature and leaders in the legislature to, to allow this to sort of happen. Am I wrong with that? No, if you call actively courting, uh, spending over a million dollars in campaign funds, and putting them on his plane and yacht. Yes, it's actively courting. And the other part of it too is, it could go to the Fountain Blue, it could go to the site that Genting has, the former Herald location, or it could also, Eric Trump has actually talked about the idea of bringing it to the Trump Doral um, land and have a casino there, correct? Those are the three obvious places. And frankly, if, if this system uh, works, they ultimately you'd end up at least in those three and perhaps more. You'd end up with casinos in a lot of places. Let me come to you, Norman. Why do you oppose this, what's taking place here? Is it just a general opposition to gambling or is it also about the process by which they're using to try to bring gambling to South Florida? Jim, our community has come a long way. We now have a high tech industry building here. We have uh, the financial industry moving here. All this, all this is contrary to what, to what casino gambling would affect. As you know, I've been, I was instrumental in bringing Art Basel here. And I can tell you that Art Basel has stated publicly that if casino gambling comes to this community, they will con seriously consider moving out of Miami and going somewhere else. It's the same situation that applies to the high tech industry and the financial industry. None of that is located in Las Vegas or any of these other gambling areas in the country. Gambling takes its toll on the local community. And that's my major objection to it. Armando, let me bring you into the discussion. What is the basis of your opposition? Norman and I are a team on this one. 
And, and how did we get there? We got there because two weeks ago, neither Norman and I had heard anything about this. We were both surprised, so we have come together, and, and I'm glad to be fighting this with Norman. Nothing grows on the shadows of a casino. Casinos are very selfish. You don't know if it's three o'clock in the afternoon, three o'clock in the morning, they subsidize the food, they subsidize the entertainment. It would have been devastating. Uh, and look at what look look what's happening in Miami Beach. Uh, so I, I think we didn't need a dam, and I think as Norman expressed, we certainly don't need it now. Mr. Mayor, let me bring you back in. I mean, a lot has changed over the years in terms of people's attitudes towards gambling. Gambling is pretty much everywhere. I'll even hear people in the back of my head saying to themselves, we have lotteries, we have, we already have gambling. You've got the Seminole, you've got the Miccosukee, you've got all these other areas that are, that are using gambling. Why not bring it to high-end facilities like the Fountain Blue, like Trump Doral, and have the tax revenue that would come along with it? First of all, the tax revenue is, is a ri ridiculous argument because all, all the casinos do is cannibalize other businesses and export the money in the community to either a, a few people or to some foreign interest. It never stays in the community. And as Mr. Brayman always says, name the community in the United States with casinos that you want to be. And, and destination casinos in the, in the town centers of our community, in downtown Miami, in downtown Durrell, in downtown Miami Beach, right on Collins Avenue, it, it, that would destroy those important areas, but it also clearly wouldn't be the last three casinos you have. You'd end up with slot machines uh, in, in markets because that's what happens when you start to open it up. And the preemption is very important. My city has passed ordinances saying you can't have casinos here. Our commission, as recently as a couple of weeks ago, said we don't want it. And every commission has done that for decades. Voters in 2018, this isn't... Uh, long time ago, three years ago, 71% of Florida voters said, voters want to be in charge of this. That's how uh, devastating it can be. Not the, even the legislature. They did, that wasn't what the amendment said. 71%. That's more than voted for any uh, person in Tallahassee making this decision right now. So the point is, the moment you drop these huge casinos into parts of the, the, the town centers of our community, you redefine those places. We're no longer an art and culture town. We're no longer a financial institute uh, uh, center. We're no longer a professional center or an import export area from Latin and South America or, or anything like that. We're a casino town. And, and, and obviously these guys want that. I think they believed the pandemic would create a, a fertile ground for them to convince people that this was the only way out. Uh, but I did a ribbon cutting this morning. I can tell you this community, all of Dade County, they're gonna, it's gonna come back very strong. And right now, I think as, as both my colleagues said a moment ago, people are coming here and they wanna invest in our community in wonderful areas, uh, in, in knowledge-based in, uh, industries, uh, in art and culture. I've never seen the kind of interest in our community that there is right now. Why would we cannibalize and destroy all that to help a couple people get another yacht or ship or just uh, find some, give some company the ability to make a huge amount of money somewhere else in the world. Yeah. It makes no this, sense. Yeah, and, and this was the same, and, and Jim, that type of logic was the same logic that was used to, to in, in Atlantic City, New Jersey. And all it did was to create the, a major catastrophe after the casinos opened on the community, on the residents, and now, as you probably saw, Mr. Trump's former uh, casino in, in Atlantic City that went bankrupt a number of years was blown up. It, yeah. it, it, there's not, the, the FBI statistics show that whether it was riverboat gambling or stationary casino gambling or any type of gambling, there is no community in the United States today that the gambling people can name that is better off today after gambling than it was before gambling. I think the three of you understand that when you have the Speaker of the House, the Senate President, and the Governor in line on something, it's going to get done. What makes you think that you can stop this at this point? Because if they want to cut a deal behind in the, in the back room, they'll cut that deal, and there's not a lot that we can do about it before the session ends. 
Dan, yeah, let me I, I throw it to I, you. I, Go I, ahead. You know, you know right. Jim, you know, Jim uh, this is really an anniversary. It's a 10-year anniversary when we removed Carlos Alvarez as mayor of, of Miami-Dade County. And that was done by the people of the community that decided to remove the mayor of Miami-Dade County for raising taxes during the beginning of a major recession. I trust the will of the people. I trust the process. I feel that we have an excellent opportunity to persuade these public officials to withdraw this legislation and withdraw it quickly. I think there's a lot of legal issues involved here. I welcome both the, both the, both the state attorney here in Miami-Dade County, the U.S. Attorney's Office, to look how this whole thing occurred. This is a, this is a, a pay-for-play situation. Dan, let me, let me, let me just, let me just, let me, Norman, let me just jump in. Uh, Dan, you know, you tell me, because you, you're, as I said, you're a veteran of Tallahassee. When money collides with the will of the people in Tallahassee, doesn't money usually win? You know, I, not always. And by the way, this isn't the first time, this has come up every session. Agreed, there's a, seems to be a lot of push, but it's, there's been a lot of push when they've been behind closed doors. Now it's sort of open and people are gonna sort of wonder why is the governor, why are these uh, why are these Senate and House leaders meeting with billionaires on private planes and yachts to decide something that they believe should be a decision of the voters? And I would say this to some of them because I, I, I was up there and I, I disagreed with my Republican counterparts quite a bit, but I, I always believe many of them, if not most of them, you know, came to the, a, a good place perhaps through a different route. I don't think any of them want this as their legacy. I can tell you something, in 10 years, if this happens, they're gonna look at what they did and they are going to regret it and have to explain it and say, yeah, I guess that was a mistake. Yeah, well, the guy offered a lot of money to the party. And, and I know that according to the papers that uh, just uh, the final blue has given and its interests have given over a million to the legislature. I think shame at some point sets in, modesty sets in, but also, a desire not to be known uh, in your life as someone who did one of the worst things possible to their own community. And I think that's what's going on right now. I think, I think they're gonna rethink it as soon as they think about uh, the way this is going. We'll be right back with Miami's new police chief, Art Acevedo, when we come back. 